Today we open year four in the Cardinals franchise. Welcome back, everybody. Very excited to get the new season underway after making a few key additions. This is a pivotal season in the franchise, of course. We are trying to win a title, but we have yet to win a playoff series. I believe we've built up a very strong team, and hopefully this year we can finally make it out of the wild card round and start to compete for a championship. It's a very pivotal year with a number of key storylines going into the year. We have players like Luis Robert who are in the last year of their deals. Even if we were to keep Robert, we know he's not going to make $10 million after this season. But we also have veterans such as Nolan Arenado who are also in the last year of their deal. Arenado at 35, can he maintain the play that he showed even last season? And then you've got a pitching staff that has changed in this series. We have now replaced all five of the starters that were with us at the first day in the series. Dylan Lesko joins the rotation this year, along with Tink Hentz coming off his Rookie of the Year season. We're expecting a lot of our youngest pitchers. Before we get the season underway, there are some things to take care of, and I think we should get Luis Robert a contract extension. He played really well last year after the trade, and I'm pretty confident he's going to be one of our cornerstones even after some down years in Chicago. We know Arenado's money comes off the books after this year, so I'm looking to replace a lot of that with a new deal for Luis Robert Jr. So we're opening today with a five-year offer and an extension. Now, the contract demands in the show really aren't as high as they should be, but Robert's now going to make just about as much as our ace Dylan Cease after this season. And that combined with the extension we gave Geraldo Perdomo is helping shape the way our roster is going to look going forward. We'll go over spring training now very quickly. Jordan Walker was one of the best hitters during all of spring with a 338 average and a 946 OPS. Lars Newtbar hit six home runs. Jorge Soler hit five. Finding our shortstop was the biggest priority in the offseason, and I made the big trade of Geraldo Perdomo. And I'm very excited to have him on this team. His spring was solid. Nothing spectacular. Got on base a ton. And that was a big reason why I wanted to bring him in in the first place. He's consistently been above a 350 on base in this series. Perdomo's going to be our everyday shortstop, finally putting an end to the questions about that position in the series. He's a very good contact hitter, takes a lot of walks, has very high batting clutch, and plays good defense. And he's only 27. He really was the ideal shortstop. We also brought back Dylan Carlson. After one year away in Seattle, where he did play well and got even more good development, I wanted to bring him back after Victor Scott did not put together a great offensive season last year. He had an amazing first couple months, stole a lot of bases, but ultimately I don't know if he's going to be the answer in center and we had to bring in somebody that could fill in and start if needed. Now I didn't want to sign anybody to a big multi-year deal and Carlson just ended up fitting that need best and that's why he returns. Early on, expect him to start against lefties, and we know he can play good defense. Jorge Soler was brought in on a one-year, $4 million contract, and we know his game is just all about hitting the ball far. I wanted to have a bench bat that could have some pop, and knowing that Wilson Contreras and Nolan Arenado are getting older, and that our team kind of stepped back last year with the home run hitting, this move was a response to that. We were able to sign a player for $4 million that can replace power if needed. The only pitching acquisition we made was to bring in reliever Phil Maton, who had a very strong spring training. Maton's pitch at a really high level in this series. He's closed out games. But overall, I just wanted to strengthen this bullpen with the best player I could. I tried to bring in Brian Abreu. When that didn't work out, I felt like Maton was the best available. We've also overhauled the pitching staff, and this year, making his debut, will be Dylan Lesko. 
He was the player we acquired for Paul Goldschmidt way back in the beginning of the series. He's been developing for a few years, but now it is time to join the big league rotation. We had a rookie of the year pitcher last year, and we're hoping Lesko is ready to hit the ground running. Another story to keep an eye on this year is with third baseman Arelvis Martinez, who put together a solid spring training. I traded for him a while ago with the hopes that he could be the one who replaces Nolan Arenado, but his development hasn't gone smoothly. And if he's going to be that everyday third baseman after this year, he's going to have to really boost his offensive production. He is out of minor league options, and I'm not going to risk him to waivers. So he's going to be on the big league roster, and I really hope this works out. Now to get this roster down to 26. I hope no one claims Levon Soto, but we don't have a spot for him at the bigs. To have Will Brennan and Joe Adele make it down the AAA, they'll have to clear waivers. We're also going to have to risk that somebody claims Adam Kloffenstein, a B potential reliever, who's just not going to be one of our eight best relievers right now. And we are going to make a trade as well. We are sending Hunter Harvey to the Baltimore Orioles. I had to cut a reliever. Trading Harvey clears up some space if we want to make a deadline acquisition down the road. And he's not coming off the most promising year. I feel like we have a lot of options now. I'd rather use over Harvey. And we're just looking to get a prospect in return. This is going to be third baseman Travis Chassin from the Orioles. He's 19 years old and a 55 overall. Long ways out, but will provide depth at a position where we don't have a lot of prospects. I wanted to make sure we had our three lefties still in the bullpen, and it was going to come down to either him or Kopech, and I just decided to get rid of the player who was making more money. This is looking like a really nice lineup for this year. When we can have, like, Wilson Contreras hitting eighth, and we know that he's still capable of putting together a very good year, this lineup is stacked. It is really difficult to set this lineup knowing that there's so many guys I'd like to play high in the order. It's a good problem to have. I expect Perdomo is going to be leading off against lefties, but I think a lot is going to change with the order as the season goes on. It's just so competitive that there's going to be a high standard for keeping your high spot in the order. Unfortunately, Norris Sullivan is not going to crack the top 26 this season. And he does have two options available, so a bit of a surprise here maybe. Mason Wynn is going to go down to AAA to open the year. And last, utility man Joey Loperfito will also be sent down. That means the bench is made up of Dylan Carlson, Jorge Soler, Ivan Herrera, or Elvis Martinez. By the way, Paul Goldschmidt has not retired. Remember when he and Nolan Arenado were very similar overalls early in this franchise? Goldie had the MVP start and we traded him while he was hot. He has regressed at a much more significant rate than Arenado, but he's back where his career began with the Diamondbacks this year. And then we got to set the minor league teams as well. And we're going to focus on guys who are going to have a chance to help us out in the near future. And Benny Matsumoto is going to get the boost to AAA to start this year. He's arguably now the closest pitching prospect to the show. So we actually have a little bit of a dilemma here with the number of starting pitchers in the organization. I need to fill out our minor league pitching staff still and there just aren't like any pitchers available in free agency so prospect swap time ryan ward for damian shelley that's a move we're making i didn't want to have to put rolando benitez at double a right away because he's a 53 and if he doesn't play well then he's not going to develop very quickly so i like guys in the 50s to play at single a immediately so that's part of why i'm trying to trade for more pitchers Looks like all of the guys that we had waived passed through waivers successfully. And we're going to work out another trade now with the Orioles, whose outfield is a complete mess right now. Colton Kowser's a 75, Akil Badu is there as an 81, but they don't have the outfielders. And I actually wanted to add starting pitcher Matt Waldron to go down to AAA, that's where he is currently for the O's, and kind of be that 
next man up if there was someone to get hurt. Right now, that guy has been Michael McGreevy, but I'm more intrigued with Waldron and that knuckleball of his. The main player going their way is going to be Will Brennan, a lefty who can play defense at a major league level, but needs the platoon more than likely. So, another trade for the cards. Of course, I traded for him and immediately went to the MLB roster, which is not what I wanted. He was at AAA. I thought he'd stay at AAA. He had just passed through waivers. I thought about claiming him, but I'm like, all right, let me just work out a trade because I can't trade for a guy until he passes waivers. So all he has to do is make it through again. One change I want to make here, we're going to take first baseman Donald Galvin and actually list him at third, where I felt his position was better anyway because he can play a little defense. That's been my plan ever since taking him. All right, finally, I've gone through and edited all the lineups and pitching staffs for the three levels that we have access to. At the AA level, you'll see Daryl Marino here, as he just didn't play like well enough to warrant a move to AAA. If he has a good first month, he might get that move, because we know, attribute-wise, he's close to big league ready. Donald Galvin, then, the newcomer, will be at third base, and those two will be core part of this lineup, along with Jesus Fernandez, who was drafted last year, who's going to start developing as the everyday shortstop. AAA has a number of players that could make their way to the bigs, whether there's an injury or somebody's not performing that well. A bunch of guys could contribute. Steve Padilla also gets the bump to be the right fielder there every day. So we're starting the year with what's considered the fourth best team on paper. Very high power, contact, good pitching as well. I think it's a pretty complete roster. At the same time, we have a number of top 100 prospects, including Rolando Benitez, Benny Matsumoto, Jesus Fernandez. And for prospect promotion incentives this year, we could get an extra pick. Depending on how Dylan Lesko plays, Martinez is also at the bigs already. I think Daryl Marino has an outside chance of being at the bigs at some point this year as well. But with that, it's time to get opening day underway. We're going to Washington to face the Nationals. Well, it's not the weather you want on opening day. The stadium's only half filled. But here we are, first game of season four. There's still a lot of goals I want to accomplish in this series, and hopefully this year we can get back to the postseason as back-to-back -back division champions and actually have some postseason success. But we know every year is a different journey. It's 162 games. It takes a while, and every team is going to go through some challenges and some changes. But let's get the new year underway. Dustin May is the... Opposing pitcher today. He's really good. I don't like playing against him. Have a lot of experience from the Rockies franchise, and I historically didn't play well against May. That is a filthy slur. Fly ball hit to center, and that's an easy play. And the catch is made. But Geraldo Perdomo will make his Cardinals debut here right now. And, ooh, he's wearing uh, Albert Pujols number five. We might want to change that one. I did edit some of the numbers. I thought I gave Perdomo something unique. I'll have to take a look at that after this episode. There's a lot of housekeeping you got to do early in the season with spring training and managing the roster and everything. Numbers I uh, always seem to overlook. And strike three down the middle. I'm just bracing for the slurve every pitch. And now I'm really curious to see what a full year for Robert here looks like. He didn't have a, a great stretch with the White Sox, but seemed to have a much better second half after we acquired him. We have eight top 100 prospects, but we're not listed in the top three farm systems right now. And a full count to Robert. Got him with the slur perfectly placed. I was taking a look at the projections on the ticker for playoff teams this year, and they had the Pirates winning the division over us, but us still making it as a wild card. The Pirates have made a lot of additions in this series. 
and we know we're going to have some good battles with them. Dylan Cease versus Dylan Cruz to get the Nationals offense started. Great year for Cease last year. I think he's going to be in the mix for a Cy Young. All-star, likely. And his season opens by giving up a slow single up the middle. Base hit right field. First two are on for the Nats. Trouble in the first inning for Dylan Cease as he nails the corner. And a slider on the opposite corner. That's a tough way to start in that bat. But we're trying to get that first punch out of the season. And we got it on the slider. Patrick Wisdom, the smartest hitter in the lineup. With two on, one gone. Whoa! Okay, we got away with one. Wisdom misses. That's back-to-back -back punch outs. And then James Wood. Nationals have a lot of intriguing players here at the majors in this series. Uh, Wood, obviously, at the majors in real life now. Been there for a little bit. He grounds it to Donovan, and we pitch around the two hits. The main thing I wanted to talk about today is how I plan to approach this fourth year in the series. Especially now that the series is very much established. We're a playoff team now. Last two seasons, team hasn't changed a lot. We know these guys. But also where we are on the calendar, approaching football season. And I would ideally like to wrap this series up in the fall when the real MLB season is wrapping up. I didn't really have an off season away from baseball last year playing the A's for 12 months. I didn't want to repeat that this year. Hitting Gorman, we have a base runner. So my plan is to work at a much faster pace this year and kind of build upon what I was doing late in Season 3 with more of the critical situations and using that back-to-back -back hit by pitches? Can we get, like, a bench warning here or something? He's hitting our guys. Jordan Walker now. Don't hit him. But I really enjoyed focusing more on the critical situations in the last season. We got to have more end-of-game scenarios. It just kind of moves the story a little bit faster than playing a bunch of full games, especially when those games don't have particular, like, interest. Nothing really stands out about them. Wow. If I can't handle his off-speed, we're not scoring any runs. Nolan Arenado, by the way, 398 home runs. So we're going to get him to 400 this year in all likelihood. See if we can get him off to a good start. I want to focus primarily on the key storylines in year four. And for me, it's going to be watching to see what veterans like Arenado do, if he slows down, if it starts to look like Martinez needs to play. Like there are so many different possibilities with injuries or players breaking out or regression. So I want to focus on whatever those key events happen to be, along with the newest players on the team. So Dylan Lesko is here as Arenado chopping to short is doubled up. I want to highlight the new players. I want to highlight the players taking the biggest leap or the prospects getting closer to the show. Another chopper keeping Donovan busy and in time. Especially early in the year, we're going to do a lot of simulating. And I think the best way to complement that is by doing the critical situation. So we're still getting a chance to play with the team in a bunch of different series. And it helps kind of break up if you're going to simulate, you know, cover like a month in a season. But you're playing, you know, a game or two in each of those weeks. I think it helps piece it together nicely for the story of the season. I feel like with baseball content, I want to be a little more strategic because the seasons are long. Strike three on Robert Hassel. Cease is pitching really well, especially commanding his fastball. Diving stop by Walker. What a play to finish the second. 
The way I do my series, I like to go through many years. But the baseball season is so long, and at a point, especially when the team isn't developing as much because they're established, I feel like I have to move a lot faster, or seasons can really drag on, and there's just an opportunity cost to everything. If I spend a bunch of episodes, you know, on a season like this where the team hasn't changed a lot, we don't do another season down the road because I spent the time on this one. You know, I was thinking about that a lot with the Raiders series recently because that is one where I dragged things on way too long. Too many watched games, especially of the full game variety. We only covered four seasons before I got weird with the format and experimented. When I have the bulk of the series focused on such a small amount of time, and I mean zoom out in my series and just think about, I have the intention of seeing what happens over a long period of time with drafting players, and then do I extend them? Do they become stars? Do they end up going to other teams that we may run into? There's a lot of possibilities that we don't get to really see fully if I take too long. A walk for Victor Scott in his first appearance of the year. And you know that light is going to be green. He goes. The pitch is low and no shot. Scott steals his first bag of the year. I like Victor Scott in more of a platoon role this year, unless his offense takes a big step forward. He was a 1.7 war player, and he gets a lot of his value from stealing bases and playing defense. We just need a little more on the offensive side. He was a 1.7 war player, which I think equates to like an average starter. Lifted into center, and that's not going to be one we try to advance on. You know, he could have made it. You never know. Geraldo Perdomo. Early on, I expect to do a lot of player locks with him and to highlight him and Dylan Lesko, two of the new guys in premium roles. And then I really enjoy just critical situations and getting to see a lot of end-of-game sequences. It's really fun to uh, stack those in an episode. But for me, the baseball content is definitely not done this year. There's a lot I want to do in this series still. And Perdomo turns on one a little early. While baseball content tends to slow down for me this time of year, I really want to challenge myself to try and see if I can reverse that a little bit and to keep interest in the series. And I think to do that, I got to be a little more strategic, try to have, you know, every episode with a true purpose and story and not just another bundle of games. And ultimately, I'm just trying to tighten everything up and learn as much as I can about doing this content so that when I come back around for MLB 25, that I feel really prepared to, like, start to finish have the experience I'm looking for. Luis Robert, two on, two down, and we've been a little more patient against May. And he missed up and in, loading the bases for last year's home run leader, Nolan Gorman, who had 37. Wow, got a pitch up and in, and we swung pretty much through it. Good fastball from May, and now we've got to try to battle here. A lot of pitches here, two and two on Gorman. That is one I shouldn't take. I have to stop taking some of these close ones with two strikes. But hey, the count is now full. May versus Gorman. And it's sent to the gap in left center and run down to finish the top of the third. By the way, I have increased the stamina slider for this year. I really don't touch sliders in this game, but the stamina has been a bit of an issue. I feel like most pitchers now in the game have a stamina rating somewhere in the 70s, and the game doesn't really account for that. I feel like it's scaling the stamina per pitch like most of those starters would be somewhere in the 80s or 90s. So it's hard for a guy with mid-70s stamina to pitch beyond like 70 pitches and still kind of be himself. 
So I think that'll be just an overall improvement. He's been able to stay ahead in the count for most of this game so far. And strikes out Cruz. And that's six strikeouts through three innings for Dylan Cease. On the ground and off the glove. We have our first hit of the year and it's Lars Newtbar. And now a grounder picked at third. Thought we had something there. It's another double play ball. Cease actually pitching from behind in this at bat. Three and one on Luis Garcia. And he just misses outside. Nationals get a leadoff walk in the fourth. And now we're falling behind Wisdom. Three and oh. His pitches aren't missing by much, but they're clearly out of the zone. Back in, finally. But walking the first two. Big chance for James Wood coming off a year with a 7.18 OPS, 19 homers. And back where we need to be now, 0-2. That is strike three. Man, I love his circle change. It's ridiculous. Now Cease pitching to Riley Adams. Count is 2-2. Two and two. Held back, it's full. And the fastball is low. So we've walked the bases loaded here, bottom four. A chance to open the game up now. Robert Hassel. Ooh, that is a tough miss. Buy him at 95. We could really use his eighth strikeout right here. 14 balls to nine strikes in the inning. We got to get this one wrapped up. Strike three on the fastball. Make it eight on the day. And now we're falling behind Alex McGarry. Making his MLB debut with the bases loaded on opening day. 96 and by him. We got one pitch to work with here. And it's just outside. Three and two, and the rookie fouls it off. Thought that was lined into left center for a second. Camera angle always plays tricks on you. Walker will handle that, and we're out of trouble. On the ground again. Every pitch we've got enough. We've just hit straight into the ground. Let's see, nope, you make one mistake, you're not getting Scott. That's gonna be a base hit as well. So he's already reached twice this year. Like having him there in the nine spot. If he's on, then our best hitters get a chance to move him. Second stolen base for Scott. Like to me, his roster spot is very safe because of this. But the starting role is what I'm just not sure about. That's why we had to go bring DC back. One gone here in the fifth. And three and one for Domo's on deck. And a walk. Two on now for one of the newest Cardinals. Geraldo Perdomo. A lot of walks in this game suddenly. Good pitch. And now we'll see if he can make something happen down 0-2. Got him on a slurve under the strike zone. So hard to lay off his slurve. Moves so much. So another chance for Luis Roberts. A double steal attempt and Scott is safe at third. All right, that's three stolen bases on the year already. 36 balls, 45 strikes. I've definitely had some patience in this game to a degree. Nearly hit him. The count now three and two on Roberts. Popped up. Too early. It's going to be in play and caught. Right in front of our dugout. 
Bottom of the fifth against George Lombard Jr. Kicks over to Walker and reaching is Lombard. And now Dylan Cease to one knee. He should be fine. That was off the cleat. And he's going to stay in. But could be his last inning. As Cruz lines one through the middle. And there will be no advance after second base. Unless we can get like a double play here shortly. Might be hard to see him going six. Oh, come on. Yeah, it's definitely going to be his last inning. It's his third jam of the game. You don't get a fourth. Three and one and in there. Fastball's dropping in velo a little bit as well. Good fastball for strike three. That's been his best pitch today. I think it's been his most uh, swing and miss pitch. He's located it the best. You know, I don't usually just go fastball over and over again, but that's the game plan today. It's like a Joe Michael throwback game, only he doesn't throw nearly as hard as him. This changeup's got to be good for a strike out here. But not on that pitch. Line drive down the line. It's fair. And finally, we have some scoring on opening day. It's a two-run double for Luis Garcia. Yeah, the curveball's just not getting down the way it needs to. And Wisdom turns on one. Gone to deep left. The Nationals just kept creating threats, running up that pitch count, and now they find the ones to do some damage on. Unfortunately, that's going to do it for Dylan Cease. First three innings were excellent. Fourth, you know, he still got through it. But now a 4 nothing game on opening day. I didn't really want to... Uh, you know, my plan isn't to use Miller in a game like this, but... Those runs came out of nowhere pretty quickly, so he's the only guy ready. Three and two on James Wood. And Walker's going to have an easy play. And Miller gets us out of the inning, but if the bats don't wake up, it's going to look a lot like those postseason games. Yeah, May is all over the place. Three and two to Gorman. And a drive belted out to center, but in the park. Now we try with Lars to the opposite gap. And it's going to travel far, but is caught. Walker's turn. Left center field. Touching down on the warning track. It's extra bases with two gone and we've got Nolan now with two gone up the middle that's gonna get through and Walker will be waved home to put the Cardinals on the board and that's gonna do it for Dustin May both teams now into their bullpens and they're going lefty DJ hers And that should be able to end the inning, but we're on the board, so maybe we can get some more later on. Matthew Liberator comes in in the sixth, and Donovan just misses. Could have been a four-pitch inning. Oh, it still will be. And coming off the bench for the first time will be Jorge Soler. He'll hit for Victor Scott, and then Dylan Carlson can play the field. Oh, boy! Solar power in his debut! Gone! 436. This signing that I've made has proven to be huge in every baseball series I've done. In the Rockies, we signed Josh Bell late for some added power. He was incredible. In the A's, 
it was Fran Mil Reyes. And now we've got Jorge Soler. 115 off the bat. That's got to be the highest exit velo I've like ever had in this game. Donovan, right center, but can't do much with it. Swung on and missed by Perdomo, trying to make an impact here in his cards debut. I've been in front of a lot of these fastballs. Got him on the outside corner. Luis Robert with two gone. That's up and belted to left center field. All right, didn't go as far as I thought. But Jorge Soler's did. And his first at-bat with the Cardinals pulls us within two runs. Arenado, still that gold glove caliber defender. Easy play for him. It's been a great outing for Matthew Liberatore. Five outs on 15 pitches. I think that'll be enough for him. And I had more warmed up in case I wanted him to just come in for one batter. Typically with my bullpen, I like to have five righties and three lefties if I can have it that way. And we're out of the seventh inning. Jordan Weems, they're going to one of their top relievers from last season. Smoked into right field. Great swing from Lars. And there's still plenty of power down here in this area of the lineup. Walker, Arenado, Contreras. Walker in the air. Gives it a ride out to center. And that ball is run down on the track. Base hit center. Arenado gets it down. And that brings up Wilson Contreras. And I think here, I want to pinch run for Nolan. We're using up our bench today. Martinez has a little more speed. And he'd be the tying run. If this goes to the gap or something, we want a chance to get that run home. Contreras versus Weems. Biggest that bad of the day. Slide to center and under it. And we are headed to the bottom of the eighth. We're going to have to score two in the ninth at least. As Arelvis Martinez will be able to make his Major League debut at least in the field. And we'll also get a look at new reliever Phil Maton. Was disappointed when we couldn't add Brian Abreu. But Maton was a really good... Second option. 88 and by wisdom. Maton's not like a lot of the younger relievers that just throw overpowering stuff. He doesn't really hit 90, but he's got two pitches with sick movement. Wisdom, he doesn't offer. He is not getting another high 80s fastball from us. It's a walk. Nice job here against James Wood. We actually do use the fastball to good success. And now trying to strike him out. Out in front. Donovan's going to get the lead runner. And James Wood. Double play. Maton pitching to Riley Adams. That works. And we're looking to pull off a comeback against Nationals closer, Dylan Tate. Dylan Carlson in his return to St. Louis leads off the ninth. Ball one. So he throws a sinker there in the mid-90s. Slider and circle change. Carlson! Deep and foul. Two and two. Come on, man. Why does that happen there? Strike three on Carlson. What was my timing going to be? Still early. But now top of the order, Donovan. A guy you want in these situations. 
Somebody's got to get on base. Ah, oh, why did I swing at that 2-0? Donovan is retired. That was such a bad swing. So it's coming down to Geraldo Perdomo. And it's pulled to the right side. I'm falling for these sinkers far too often. Nationals win on opening day 4-2. We got a couple runs late, but... Felt like another game where our batted ball luck wasn't all that great. Both teams had seven hits and drew uh, a few walks. Both hit one homer. But they got their big hits with runners on. Dylan Cease opens his season with nine strikeouts, three walks, and four runs allowed in four and a third. All right, Waldron did pass through waivers successfully, so that move has worked. We can slot him into the rotation. These are going to be my settings early in the year for custom game entry. Willing to come into the seventh inning, play out possibly three innings. A lot of these games go to extras at the same time. That I think will allow us for a variety of situations and chances to see a lot of action. Let's fit a player lock into this one as well. I want to get some more reps in with Geraldo Perdomo. We're facing a lefty here in game two. And that's Mackenzie Gore, who last year didn't have the season he would have wanted. Love these blue uniforms for the cards, and it's outside a fastball. Got Perdomo hitting leadoff against the lefty, as Donovan only hit like 250 against lefties a year ago. That's kind of a wicked 12-6. I know I have to get better about working counts. I haven't been as patient, I feel, in recent episodes and kind of paid for it in the playoff games, I felt. But three and two now versus Gore. And it's slowly hit over to third base and Perdomo's retired. We're on the board thanks to a Lars Newtbar bases loaded single. And now runners at the corners. Perdomo looking for his first cards hit. Center field coming in and caught. Wow, Gore only went a few innings in this game. It's already DJ Hers in the fifth. That is his first Cardinals hit. It's smashed down the line. Extras for Perdomo. And he's in there with a leadoff double. Yeah, I got to change that number still, but Jordan Walker will move him to third. RBI chance for Luis Robert, and that should do it. We're going to try at least. Ooh, that is a good throw. And on the money. Don't run on James Wood, I guess. Sweet, we got some defense now. Two down for Corbin Burns, who's having a pretty solid first start. And it's sent right at Perdomo. And the throw is perfect. Three-run shot. Lars Newtbar extends the Cardinal lead. And Perdomo's got his second hit. Another one smashed. 112 off the bat. I was thinking about this earlier, and one thing I like about the Perdomo move is that it takes a lot of the things we were used to with the Tommy Edmond experience and just amps it up. Like, Perdomo is also a switch hitter, who I think will play a similar level of defense, but he's just a better hitter overall. Tommy's the more versatile player, but it's not like I was playing him anywhere but short last year, so it didn't really matter. Nice diving play, but you're not getting anybody. Luis Robert on the board now with a hit. And Gorman with one down. That's a liner to right field, and I know better than to try this again. I have no idea what the sign was, but I wasn't going. Pitching to Wilson Contreras, it is 3-0. And walking home is Perdomo. 
Perdomo, two for four on the day. A couple of really hard hit balls. And 2-0. And it's ball four, despite that being very much a strike. I want to say Perdomo and Edmund have similar speed as well. You could steal the occasional base with Perdomo, but I think it's going to be more situational with a guy that's slow to the plate. Or often I'll steal in like 0-2 counts, anticipating maybe a bad breaking ball in the dirt. So he might be like a 10-15 to 15 stolen base guy if I had to ballpark it. Robert trying to continue the rally, but instead strikes out. Still a good cushion for the cards. Two-run shot, Arenado, followed by Donovan's. So Arenado has 399 home runs. I think we have an early storyline to track early this season. As Perdomo gets one more trip here in the ninth. Fly to right center field. Carrying deep to the track and caught. Not quite a shutout, but Burns does go the full nine. The bullpen gets a rest day. That's two days in a row they get off. Because teams don't play two days in a row typically to start the year. And a really nice offensive showing in this game for a lot of players. And we'll see how things go next episode. I always like for opening day to kind of get its own focus, talk about the season, and see that new team in a full game setting. But I do want to get on to the next video and start to, uh, you know, hopefully move at a pace that allows us to get through things quickly and still get to enjoy storylines and the events of the season. Leave your thoughts on today's episode and the things I talked about today and maybe suggest the number for Geraldo Perdomo. But please leave a like, subscribe to the channel. More cards coming your way soon. See you next time.